Hi there, John Wilkinson again and History Made Easier again. This video is going to look at the American policy of containment and it's going to ask two questions. The first, what was that policy? And the second, how did the Americans try to apply it? Any answer to the question, what was the American policy of containment, will have to state the obvious. It was a policy to contain communism. Russia was, of course, the first communist state in the world after the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. But after World War II, Russia had forced itself onto a whole swathe of East European countries. And right down the centre of Europe, there was this Iron Curtain, as Churchill called it. And America, with Britain, but America to the fore, was determined that that Iron Curtain would not creep westwards. I think we see the policy of containment first applied when America responds to the Soviet blockade of Berlin. But the, the net of containment needs to spread more widely pretty soon when at the end of 1949 Mao wins the Chinese Civil War and declares the People's Republic of China. So containment has to look at Asia as well as Europe. So containment was a policy to contain communism. But it was also a policy to defeat communism. Because containment would squeeze the ability for the communist world to trade. And so it would weaken the communist bloc countries' economies. Also, containment would force the communist world to spend more money than it can afford on its military. And that cost becomes very, very expensive when you think of the technology of uh, the, the nuclear uh, deterrent and the technology of rockets. It doesn't come cheaply. And the Americans felt that they could afford to outspend uh, the Soviet bloc and at the same time provide the material goods for their people. Things like televisions and cars and such like. And as the people in the Soviet world see the material benefits of the West, they will put pressure on their own governments, eventually bringing their own governments down. That was the policy of containment. And you will see it reach its, its, its moment of glory, if you like, uh, with Gorbachev and the collapse of the Soviet Union and the collapse of the Eastern Bloc and the end of the Cold War. So containment, a policy to contain communism, but also a policy to defeat communism. So how was it to be achieved if not through war? You will look at Korea, you will look at the Cuban Missile Crisis, and you will look at Vietnam. So you know that war will be risked, but essentially it's a policy to defeat communism without going to World War III, at least. Well, there is the UN, and pressure could be 
applied to the communist world, criticisms could be made of the communist world through the UN. And it was. The UN would be limited. Soviet, the Soviet Union would always have its veto to apply. You will see that the veto wasn't applied in Korea, but on the whole, it was. But nevertheless, pressure could be used through the UN. Other moral pressures could be applied. Jimmy Carter, at the end of the 70s, made a major platform of his presidency about human rights. And he criticised the communist world for their record of human rights. So moral pressures could be applied in other ways as well as through the UN. Another means of asserting uh, this policy of containment was through treaties. Now you will look at NATO as uh, the first military treaty uh, of the Cold War. But there were other treaties as well. You will look at Seattle, uh, the Southeast Asian Treaty Organization. America, Britain, France were members, Australia and New Zealand were members, and so too were countries like the Philippines, Thailand and Pakistan. Britain set up the Baghdad Pact, uh, a pact or a treaty of Middle Eastern countries. It again included Pakistan, uh, as well as Iraq and Iran. Um, America was involved, but it was a British-led initiative, Britain having a, a major influence in the Middle East. But the main means of applying containment pressure, if, you, if you'd like to call it, was through the arms race. And the arms race with nuclear technology and with, with um, rocket technology becomes very, very expensive. And that's why I think you guys need to look at uh, the arms race in some detail. You don't have to worry about note taking or, or anything, but you should be aware of the arms race because it will give you a much better understanding of the whole policy of containment. And of course, it, it comes up <laughs> in the Cuban Missile Crisis. So I hope that gives you a, 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 a deeper background to the policy of containment and helps you in your studies when you come to look at uh, Korea and the Cuban Missile Crisis and Vietnam. So as always, I thank you for listening. And as always, I remind you to check out my History Made Easier website. Cheers. <laughs>